today's video, I'm going to show you how to download a character model, import it into Max, and get it animated and controlled. So there's going to be a lot of steps included in this tutorial. Um, I'm going to take you through downloading a file from uh, Mixamo and the corresponding uh, animations that you might like. I'm going to show you how to take that those those animations and combine them in Blender. Um, we're going to also be using Unity to take the combined model and uh, abstract the materials for the the model um, so that we can get its color uh, you know correct. And then finally, we'll import it into Max and uh, we'll go over the steps for getting the FPE file updated and f and then uh, we'll apply the MPC control behavior to it and set that up. So a lot to cover in this video. Let's get started. So this is Mixamo. Uh, you don't have to use Mixamo characters per se. I'm using it because there's a lot of options. You can see there's a whole lot of characters. These are free to use. They're, um, you know, there's no uh, restrictions. So feel free to start with these to kind of get your feet wet. And what I like about Mixamo is that not only does it have characters that you can download, but it also has animations, a lot of animations. And so we can select the ones that we want to use for our character. We can even upload a character that we found elsewhere. So there are character models that um, you can find on other websites. You can upload it here and then apply the uh, Mixamo animation to the model with some limitations. Of course, it needs to f you know, be fairly close to a humanoid character. Um, you can't, you know, take a giraffe and, and upload it and expect it to work the same way. It just, it's just not the same uh, bone structure. So, you know, bear that in mind, experiment. I've had kind of, you know, hit and miss when it comes to what, uh, Mixamo can accept and what it can't. So just give it a try and, and hope for the best. But for right now, we're gonna keep it simple and just get a Mixamo character downloaded, get the animations downloaded, and then uh, move on to the next steps that I mentioned before. So here I've chosen Parasite. That's the name of this character. Um, and right now he's in a idle pose. Um, and so I can just download this and what we want is we want to keep all this default we want to keep the fbx uh, format and we want to keep with skin that's really important because at a later step when we go for the materials we need the uh, the materials to come with the model um, so really it's just a matter of going through and finding the character that you want first and then applying a an animation to it and then downloading that animation um, you are going to want uh, up to four idle animations, one walk animation, run, uh, a threat, which I interpret to be like, a you know, the character being threatening. Um, so it could be like maybe a scream. Rah, right. So uh, that's the way I interpret it anyways. Uh, you can have up to three different attacks. You can have a couple of punches and a kick. You know whatever you like uh, we need a hurt so the character being hurt being hit or shot um, and then finally you can have up to two death animations uh, that's what the npc controller allows for um, you can you know get other animations and and set that up but you would have to code that yourself so uh, that is out of the scope for this tutorial um, but go ahead and uh, take that list that i gave you Pick a character, download all the animations that you want. You don't have to have like all four idols. We can just reuse the same idol twice. Um, same thing with that act and death. So, you know, don't feel like you have to download a whole bunch of them. Uh, you know, just you need idol walk, run, threat, attack, hurt, and death. That's the take home. Okay. So uh, go ahead and get that done and we'll move on to the next step. Okay. So I've loaded up a fresh project in Blender, and if you haven't used it before, it's okay. Um, 
this is what it looks like when you first jump in there. The controls are a little tough to get used to. Um, you use the mouse button to, to move things around. You can go in and out, uh, but it's that wheel mouse. I'm holding the wheel mouse and just moving it around. If I right click or left click, I get menus and things. It's not the same as what you might imagine in other 3D environments. So just be careful with what you're doing. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these objects that it comes with to begin with because we just don't need them. Um, and we're going to import our first uh, file. So we'll go to FBX. Uh, mine are buried deep here. So these are the <coughs> animations that I chose to import uh, to download. Now I'm going to go through and import each one of these. We'll just start at the top, breathing idle. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll in a little bit and move the cursor so we can see that we have the character. Um, and if we press space, we can see that the animation is there. Well, we don't have color, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to deal with that later on. Um, this little horny piece up here at the top is called the armature a little cone uh, so I'm going to click on that and you notice that the uh, animation is tied to it so if I click off of that it goes away click onto it there it goes so that's important I'm just going to scroll my wheel mouse <clears throat> down so that it uh, allows for a little more room and notice here that the animation for this is actually longer than what we have as far as keyframes so far so, uh, we're going to be adding a whole lot more uh, animations to this so I'm just going to go ahead and Im uh, add more room so I'm just clicking here and typing uh, I'm gonna guess say 1500 I could be way off we'll see so that adds a little more space so now we need to import our next animation. So I'm just gonna repeat the process, file FBX, we'll do falling back, death next. I'm just gonna go one by one. Doesn't really matter which order they're in. Okay, so now we have two representations of the character, but all we really care about is the animations, which is right here. And the armature is already selected, so I'm just going to uh, left click and drag around the uh, keyframes and then I'm going to press control C to copy them and then I'm going to click back on the armature for the original model and just put your uh, your keyframe somewhere after uh, the first animation and then just paste that in so now we have two animations and we can get rid of the second one that we imported because we don't need him anymore and if we press well let's get that selected if I were to uh, just put my keyframe anywhere and just press space now you can see it plays through both animations so that's the process for blender I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this and you'll see that I've imported each animation one by one until I've got all the animations set up Okay, here we are in a new project in Unity. This is just a, a fresh, clean uh, project with nothing in it. I'm going to grab the f uh, one of the animations that we downloaded. It's really important that you get just, it doesn't matter which animation file, just one that uh, you downloaded off of Mixamo earlier that has the skin, because that's the, the, the textures that we need. I'm just going to grab the idle. You choose whichever you want and pop that in there. So here is the model. Um, and when I click on it, you can see the inspector tab shows up and right away we're already selected on the materials tab. There's the, like the animation for idle and so on, but here's the materials. Here's the textures that we need. So we're going to click on extract textures. This is just the project file that, uh, unity is set up for this particular project so I'm just going to select that and it's going to 
uh, plop all those in there. What does it say? Material is using a texture as a normal map. The texture must be marked as a normal map in the import settings. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, perfect. So here are the texture files for that uh, character. If I right click on that and I click on uh, show and explore, that's going to open the path where the assets were saved. Um, I really just need the, um, the PNGs. So I can just click on each individual PNG. I'm holding down the control key. I don't really need the meta files. I'm just going to copy those and I'm just going to paste them into the same folder that I have Parasite saved in. So I did that off screen. There we go. And so now we have the model. This is the com combined model, uh, but that one doesn't have any textures. If you remember when we put it into Blender, it came in with no textures, came out with no textures too. And that's the one we're ultimately going to be importing in, uh, but we needed the, the textures to be able to put those back together. So we'll do that in the next step. Okay, finally we're going to uh, Max. I've just loaded up a uh, blank scene for the demonstration. We're going to click on Add and then Import 3D Model. Uh, now hopefully you've watched my video on how to import models, so you're at least somewhat familiar with this process already. If not, feel free to pause the video and go and watch that. I think it's uh, it covers it in a lot more detail than I plan to show in this video, so if you really want to get more detailed than what I'm going to show. Uh, you can go ahead and watch that and that'll give you everything that I might skip over in this one. Uh, so here's the combined model. I called it Parasite. So we're going to pull that in. And he's huge. And he's got all the animations already playing straight out of the gate. We're going to fix all that. So first things first, let's deal with the scaling. Uh, let's try automatic scaling now. He's oh, he's cute. He's a little tiny guy. Okay, let's try centimeters. Uh, centimeters. It's not bad. I don't mind that he's taller than the, the character. And in fact, I'm just going to skip down here real quick and see if I can find an idol just so he'll sit still. Um, okay, so I mean, he's he's a big guy, right? He's, you know, we can uh, scale that down if we want to. We can leave him huge. He is a monster after all, so... You know, whichever uh, you decide to do, here's the, the scale. So you could scale them down to, say, like, maybe 95 or something if you want them a little bit shorter. I think I like them big. Uh, not 10. That's too small. There we go. <laughs> One thing I was going to point out, and this is covered in the documentation as well, uh, but, it, you know, I, I'll point it out for the, for the sake of argument. Make sure that you're selecting the polygon collision right here in the customization screen. That's really important. It's easy to miss. So make sure you do that. Um, so you'll notice that the, uh, the colors came in with the model immediately. And that's because they exist in the same folder as the parasite model that I imported. However, we're missing some things. So we're missing our normal map. Um, and that is right there. And let's see. I always click uh, use RGBA and we'll make sure we get everything else we have. We have diffuse and specular. I'm pretty sure diffuse is just color. Um, so that means we only have specular and I think specular is occlusion. Yeah, much brighter, much easier to see. That looks nicer. Uh, make sure that you are uh, covering all of your bases and just hitting all the uh, the slots. Again, that's covered uh, mostly <laughs> in the other video, so go watch that if you're confused. Uh, but that's not too bad. It looks it looks pretty good. So uh, now let's take a look at the animation tool. So this is something that's not covered in the uh the other video and that's because i didn't have a model that had animations it's just out of scope for that model um, so here we are with the animations now we don't know which animation is what just yet because they're they all say armature armature 01 uh, from maximum mixmo so we're gonna have to figure that out so this one here eh, it looks like a death so we're just gonna call that death one 
Okay. I'm just going to go through and rename all of these. That looks like an idle. Idle one. That looks like I might have the same one twice. Let me just pay attention to this because they sometimes they can look the same, but they're not quite the same. It's so like, see how he hasn't moved at all? But this one here, if we leave it on here for a little while, his head moves. So they're close, but not the same. So idle two. Okay, what is this? So he's moving really slowly. And notice the animation speed is down to like 25. If I just kick that up to 100 and we'll let it play a second time, that makes more sense. So that's just death. That's him dying. Death 2. Okay. There's a punch. I think he has, well, let's call it attack. Let's call it attack 1. Okay. And there's attack two. You may have fewer uh, uh, animations, so just go through and do do what I'm doing and name them. It'll be easier later when you're trying to identify which one's which. So that one's obviously hurt. There's run. Kick. So we'll call that attack three. I did all of the uh, the different animations. There's walk. There's threat. And finally, I think that's just another idle. So we should have. Yeah, it's just an idle. Okay. There we go. Now, watch this. It's got a uh, an animation start of 771 all the way to 1904. That's obviously multiple um, uh, animation frames. We don't need all of that. We don't know where this idle ended. And frankly, I don't care to, to try to figure it out. So I'm just going to get rid of it because I don't really need additional idles. I already have two there and I'm happy with that. So that's good enough for me. Um, we're going to go through and make a note of the, uh, the, the idle. Well, we're going to make a note of the keyframes for each of these um, animations and I think what I'll do just because I'm lazy is take a snippet of these there we go and just put that on my other screen if it'll let me there we go um, because we're going to need those so capture these if you haven't already done so capture the start and finish position of each one of your animations um, and you know pause the video if you need to or just do a snippet like I did that's easy uh, but Let's just walk through the model one more time, make sure that everything looks exactly the way we want it to be. We have polygon, that's good. Materials are set up. Okay. And the animation frames are all in place, stopping at 770. Okay. I think I'm happy with this. We're going to uh, click on the import section. Now, I'm going to warn you, I have been a slouch when it comes to importing models and just importing them all into the same bucket it's not a good practice don't be me <laughs> be cleaner with your project files i'm trying to build good habits so here if we just take the time to click on characters it'll go into the character folder that's at least a little bit more organized all right so let's go ahead and import that let's see so you can see i've done some practicing Okay, so there's our our model, and we're going to put in some keywords here. So we'll put in monster, character. Uh, you can put in whatever you like. We'll click Add Object to Library. There you go. Now, if we go and search for him now, we should be able to find him. Yep, there he is. We'll pull him right in. There he is. And he's just standing there idle, right, not doing anything. Now, if I play the scene, here's my character over here. If I just play this, he's not going to do anything. He's just going to stand there. All right. And the reason is because he doesn't know to do anything. Uh, we don't have any uh, behavior attached to him yet. So let's fix that. Uh, so that's our next step. We want to uh, 
make sure that we have this all set up. Yep, Polygon is set up perfectly. That's great. Um, sometimes this happens in Max. I've noticed that it, it says, hey, you can't add a behavior for static objects. I think that might be a bug. I don't know if it's been repeated or uh, reported or not, but what I usually do is just switch it to physics off, then switch it back to physics on, and then lo and behold, we can add behavior. So just ignore that. Um, we'll call it character. <laughs> so uh, NPC controller is our, oops, there we go. Okay, so before we can start setting up the behavior, we have a little work to do in the FPE file. So let's do that next. We're just gonna go ahead and save our changes here. Actually, let's get rid of him first and then we'll save it. Okay, we do need to close Max. And then we're gonna go to our documents folder, which is where imported files go um, your like your own personal files and I believe the reason for that is so that when there's a update it doesn't wipe out all the the models that you've imported so it just stores them in here uh, let's see here that is the wrong game maker there we go that's uh, files remember it's going to be under entity user and then thankfully we put it into character so here's the alien that i did earlier for practice and it's got a bunch of stuff in here and then here's the parasite and when it, when you import a file really any model it creates a, an fpe file for you um, so let's open that up now the guide is very good about detailing exactly what it is you need to set here um, so uh, I'll just walk you through those settings. Uh, first things first, we have default static. We're going to change that to a zero. We have uh, is character, which is down here. Let's go and look for that. Change that to a one. We have our strength uh, for the character. It needs to be at least 150. Uh, you know, our, our uh, Parasite is a monster, so let's give him the same health, at least, as the player for now, for the sake of argument. And then we need to set up the animations in here as well. So here, this part right here talks about the animations, and it ha it's basically showing that there are 11 animations in the model, and there's really only one animation slot, and that's animation zero right now. So we're going to fix this um, by getting rid of that. And then we'll take this and copy that down to three, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That should be everything that we need. Um, if you have your notes from earlier, go ahead and pull those up because we're going to need those. I'll just pull mine into view. So this is what I did was I just took a snippet and we're going to assign the frames for each animation. Make sure that you're naming them correctly. Um, so it is an index. So that what that means for those of you that don't do any kind of programming is indexes always uh, start counting at zero. So animation zero is the first animation and so on. Um, so that's why we should have 10 slots. Oh, well, we have 11 slots, but it'll go up to 10 when we get done. So there's animation zero. Uh, let's do one, two, three, four, five, there we go. Animation 10, like I was saying. And then here we're gonna put in the frames that we uh, have for that particular animation. So the first one for me was death starts at zero. It ends at 78. Uh, I'm gonna put a little uh, semicolon here and I'm just gonna mark this death one. That, that way you can add a comment. Go ahead and fill out the rest of this. I'm just gonna pause the video while I fill out the rest of this. You don't have to watch me type. 
Okay, so there's all of my animations noted with their keyframes, start to finish. So this is what the FP needs to understand the to kind of connect with the the model that's in Max, and it doesn't do it automatically. Uh, so we just need to do, make some quick edits. I'm just going to do Control S to save. We'll go back into Max and load in the uh, the file and and see how that works. Okay, we're back in in Max. We're going to add our parasite character, and there he goes, just running through his animations so he doesn't know yet how to control himself so we're going to add our npc control and let's step through all these wonderful settings together okay so first thing we have is the sense text um, that's just it means like when it senses the player does it say something this is just the placeholder text um you know we don't have to say anything um I'm just going to put that and then we have a sense range is just how far away can it sense the, the player. Um, this number is it's 500 units. I don't really know what the measurement of a unit is in terms of how far that is. So you may just have to dial that in a little bit. I can tell you that um, from the floor to the roof typically is 100 units. So if that gives you any kind of idea of uh, the distance there. Hopefully that helps. Uh, we have NPC will flee. Yes or no. It's just a bullion. Uh, it's a monster. So he's not going to run away from you. That's better for like NPCs or animals, things like that. Our idle time. This has to do with like, how long will he uh, repeat his idle animations before he decides to move into some other uh, behavior such as roam. Uh, so that's just kind of how long is he going to stand there. The attack range is, you know, his reach. Uh, how close does he need to be um, before he starts to attack? Um, and then uh, the attack interval. Um, I think this is a thousand. And if that's the case, then it's probably one, uh, 1,000 milliseconds, which would be one second. So that's every second he's throwing an attack. Uh, again, dial this all this in. I'm going to leave it all as default for now, just you know, to, to get us a baseline. Um, but dial this in because every model that you use is going to be just a little bit different, even with Mixamo. Uh, and so you're just going to have to look and see, you know, what looks and feels nice to you. Um, you're you're in control here. Um, attack damage again. I'm just going to leave it for default for now. Uh, NPC can roam. I'm going to leave this as yes. Um, so if you don't want him roaming around right aimlessly, then just set that to no. Roam range. That's just how far can he travel before he uh, reaches the limits of his, his little world. Uh, NPC animation speed. Um, it seems kind of fast right now. And that's at 8-0. So if we change this, let's put it to 50. Does it make a difference? I don't think so. So I don't think it's talking about this animation speed. I think you should ignore this. And instead, we're going to put this up at one. Oops, that's two. Um, and see how it feels at first. And we can, again, just kind of move, uh, dial that in. So yeah, animation speed. Move speed, that's just how, how, how fast is it going to move. Run speed's just a little bit faster than that. I think I'm going to dial that up to 150. Uh, let's see. NPC turn speed, we'll leave it alone for now. And then this character doesn't have a gun, so he's not going to be able to shoot anything. Um, but we can plug in our anima or animations. Idle 1, idle 2. Remember, there was four different um, idle slots. I only brought in two, so I'm just going to go back and forth between idle one and idle two. We have a walk somewhere. <laughs> there we go. We have run threat okay. attack one attack two. I did bring three attack um, animations. I think yes. I just misspelled it, but that's okay. I don't care. Shoot animation. I don't have one, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, hurt animation, I do have one of those. Uh, death animation, we have those. 
I think. Yeah, there's uh, I have death one, so there's death two. So last flag animation. What that means is if you're using flags to have the character patrol uh, from you know point to point to point, when it gets the last flag, um, it'll perform this animation. Uh, so I think if I were using a, f a, a flag for this, I'd probably either choose like thread or I'd choose idle or something like that. Let's choose idle too. The last flag time just means how long will he stand there at the last flag before he begins backtracking through his, uh, his path. Um, the last flag loop is really just um, looping the animation at last flag. So if the duration at last flag is longer than the item, uh, uh, the animation that you chose, then you'd want him to loop that animation. Uh, force move, the way it explains this in the documentation is, and by the way, you can find the same documentation I'm referring to in your folders. It's under guides, it's under NPC. Um, so you, you can go and, and refresh your memory or reference that if you want to. Um, but for force move, this is what it says. It says select force move for forcing movement of a non-conforming model. Uh, for some older models that don't respond and are rooted and walk on the same spot, for example. So if you're having trouble getting the character to look like it's moving, try using force move and see if that'll uh, make a difference. Um, the diagnostics, I'll show you what that does in a second. I'm going to skip over it for now, but I'll show you what that does in a moment. Uh, we have use sound variants, and there's four different sound slots. I don't have sounds prepared for this character, so I'm just going to ignore the sounds for now. I think you guys probably get what a sound does, so I'm, I'm just going to skip that part. Um, but let's take a look at this. First thing I want to do is I want to get my character away from our monster. So let's put him way over here. There we go. So we should see him just standing there and idle, right? And he's just going to idle there. I want to see if we wait a, uh, a period of time, we should see him roam around a little bit as well too. But right now he's just gonna loop through his idol. Wonder can he hear me? He can't hear me. Too far away. Let's get up close here. So there he goes. He starts to roam. Is he heading towards me or is he just roaming? I think he's just roaming because he's not trying to follow. Okay. So let's get close up. Oh, hey, ah, I kill you. <laughs> okay. So he's, his runs a little slow. We can speed that up a little bit. It's not too hard to evade him. Uh, I can shoot him. I think. Yeah. So he got hit there. There's that hit animation. All right. Rah. <laughs> let's see death. There we go. That's awesome. So there we go. We have a, a character that we've brought into the world. We can control them and animate them as we need to. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I know a lot of you guys were kind of looking forward to this one. I was too. Uh, I really appreciate the likes. It makes me feel good. So be sure to click the like button. Um, if you're new here and you want to see more content, I do plan on cover covering you know everything I can in uh in max so be sure to click the subscribe button so you can keep track of the new videos as they come out and speaking of new videos if you'd like a notification uh just click the bell icon it'll tell you when new um new new videos are uploaded so that'll keep you up to date uh thanks so much for watching i know this was kind of a long one but i'm pretty sure that it'll help a lot of people so i was happy to do it i'll see you in the next one bye for now